Hey everyone, this is Mike, and today it's time for Dragoon, our last DPS. Dragoon completely exceeded my expectations, which wasn't hard to be honest, because they were quite low to begin with, but it was a very pleasant surprise to see what they did with Dragoon. At first glance, all that seemed to have changed was that some stuff had charges now, different timers on our buffs to put them in line with the 1-2 to two minute rate buff philosophy they went for in Endwalker, and a new of global cooldown. Out of all of these things, I thought that the main thing that we would feel in our rotation was going to be that extra of global cooldown, and that would be about it. But I couldn't have been more wrong. The charges on Spine Shatter and Life Surge are mostly whatever, because Spine Shatter will just be using as if it's a one minute cooldown, because of how Dragoon often can't double weave, but for Life Surge it's really nice, because it has a 45 second cooldown on it, meaning that we can save the buff for our one minute buff windows. And that is where the big change lies with Dragoon in terms of feeling. The buff windows. You now have Lance Charge at 60 seconds, which is the old Blood for Blood for those that don't know its new name, and then we have both Dragon Sight and Battle Litany at 2 minutes. While I initially didn't think much about this, it means that our burst window is now always going to be fixed. Back in the day, we would sometimes delay Life of the Dragon, or sometimes you would delay Star Diver to fit it under raid buffs, and as someone that only played Dragoon very casually, I honestly never bothered learning all the different timings of when you need to hold and when you don't need to hold. I just press my buttons as they came up. However, with these new timings, it fixes your life of the dragon cycle. You'll always be delaying it now, and then you will always have life of the dragon when you either have land charge up for your one minute buff windows, or when you have those two minute raid buffs up. And I gotta say, it feels great. Yeah, I agree that it takes away from the skill expression that there was, but I guess there will still be a lot of players that don't know that you always need to delay life now and then just play it like I did, where they see the button light up and they press it. So while it lowers the skill ceiling, there's still something there to think about. Speaking of lowering the skill ceiling, you no longer need to hit positionals to proc Raiden Trust. This is because we now have a Raiden Trust equivalent for our AoE skills and a function of the same buff. So the buff is now called Draconian Fire and you obtain it by using Fang and Claw and Wheeling Trust as a combo, can also be the other way around, or by completing your AoE combo with Coerton Torment. In other words, just hit your combos and you'll get the buff. And this buff will then change your combo starters into an upgraded version. On one hand, I'm a little bit sad to see the positional requirement go, because this was the only time where we were not only rewarded with damage for hitting a positional, but also with a new animation. On the other hand, you're already losing potency for missing that positional, and with the way it was in Shadowbringers, you would lose potency twice, once on the skill itself, and then a second time by not getting Raiden Trust. So I can see why they changed that. Using Raiden Trust or Draconian Fury, which is the AoE skill, will grant you a stack of First Mind's Focus, and you need two stacks to use our new of global cooldown, Wormwind Trust, which is an AoE ability that deals damage in a straight line in front of you. One last thing I should mention, I guess, is that Chaos Trust and Full Trust now have gotten upgraded versions, nothing that changes your rotation, just a new animation and a bit of extra potency. So while at the core, a lot of Dragoon has remained the same, the different timings on your buffs make the rotation fit together so much better. And the extra of global cooldown is also a nice addition, because Dragoon has always been the slow melee, because it's the only one that doesn't have some sort of a haste buff. I guess Reaper is also slow, but it gets to go fast during Enshroud. But because Dragoon has their jumps, which makes them unable to double weave, getting that extra of global cooldown that we also get access to fairly often can make the rotation feel a lot more busy, especially when we can sit on the ability for a little while to fit it under raid buffs when we can. It adds an extra layer onto the job, which I can appreciate. So while my expectations for Dragoon were quite low, I'm actually really happy with how the job turned out to be, and I enjoyed playing it a whole lot more than I initially expected to, and that's always a nice surprise. And I think that's gonna do it for today's video, so I want to thank you for watching, I want to thank my patrons for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.